what up people this is Bonjo. today I'm in Croatia but we're gonna talk about something that needs to be talked about do I regret moving to Croatia from Canada it's been almost five years now since I've been an expat here in Croatia five years ago where was I huh five years ago I was just overcoming a depression problem hating my life everything going bad all the wrong decisions and then I made this decision I didn't know if it was gonna be the right decision I just dropped everything quit my job come here don't have a job and hopefully everything worked and so far so good my first year I met Mickey boom right away met Mickey and it was the pandemic remember that not too many people not too many people I met Mickey she got pregnant we had a baby moved to Argentina for one year then came back to Croatia and here we are in Croatia living our life we have a rental property we're doing good we're renting to tourists it's tourist season right now actually it's August um, so if I didn't move to Croatia I wouldn't have met Mickey I wouldn't have had Enzo and I wouldn't be happy so do I regret it hell no <laughs> but what are the pros and cons of being here in Croatia versus Canada. This is the Bon jo Show. This is not your show. He traded the 905 for Giovo. This is Bon jo. What up, people? This is Bonjour. Today, we're going to talk about life as an expat after five years of experience. The regrets, things I like, things I don't like, things I miss, things I would have changed. So let's get into it. What are some of the things I regret or change from being an expat and leaving my life in Canada to moving it to Croatia? Sure in the hell not the nature or the scenery or the city. I mean, I made a great choice. I have no regrets at all. But I'll say this, I wish I would have thought it out a little bit better. Maybe got all my paperwork done in Canada because the bu bureaucracy here is very hard. But if I would have got it all sorted out at the Croatian Embassy in Canada, it would have made for an easier life here and faster. Everything would have been faster. The process of becoming a Croatian citizen would have been faster. And also, I wish I wasn't in such a bad state and depressed in Canada because I didn't like my life there. And if I would have saved up and maybe planned it better and not just moved like that, it would have been easier and I would have had a better setup here. But you know what? If I didn't do that and I procrastinate, like, oh, I'll save up some more money. I'll save up. I'll start now saving. I probably would never have moved. So all that stuff happened for a reason. And I'm happy it happened because here I am in Croatia. It's a beautiful life. There's not much to regret, I'll tell you that. It's the best decision I made in my life, I'm telling you. It's not even, it's not even close. This is easily. I got a family. I got everything going for me now, right? So yeah, all that. What do I miss? Things I miss from Canada. I would say the people, but that's not true. Every time I meet a Canadian here, there's been a few Canadians here that I that I liked. I met this couple. The guy's name was Tom. They were a pretty good couple. Yeah, so they were pretty good. But all the other Canadians that I kind of met here, Mishy's good. She's from uh, the west side. It just makes me realize I never had real friends there or anything. I don't miss the people. The only people I miss, obviously, my mother. But my mother comes here every year and she's going to be living here soon. And my sister and my niece and nephew. And my brother. You know, and his cats. <laughs> Twix. Shout out to Twix. We miss you, Twix. But yeah, Max Maya and all them. We miss them. But everybody else, it's like, nah, life goes on. With or without you, really. And that's just the harsh realities of it. Moving here, I realize who is your friend. You get to see everybody kind of be jealous or envious or put your plans down or doubt you. Everybody didn't believe that I'd move here. They thought it was just like, yeah, yeah, like everybody says. But here I am. I'm still here. I'm still here. I achieved my dream. I followed I took the step. The hardest thing of moving here was taking the big first step. And I took it. And here I am today. I'm still here living the life. Look at this. And Enzo's, I got a boy named Enzo. Look at this guy. What are the shocks here? One of the big shocks that I've noticed here was how nice Canadians are in public 
<laughs> you know, like every time you bump into them, sorry, 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 let me open the door. Here, here's my seat, you can have my seat, like these kind of things. Around the world, everybody's not that nice realistically. And I don't know, fake nice, fake conversations, I think I hate that stuff. I Like I hate running into people and having the old, um, hmm, like I haven't seen them in two years, hmm. So, what's new? I mean, we haven't seen each other in two years. Do you want me to start two years ago or do you want me to say, not much. Oh, hmm, all right. Yeah, then uh, I guess uh, see you around. I hate those little small talk, fake conversations here. I love it. The Croatian and people are just like, you know, sometimes they'll be like, hey, full out conversation because they want to know something or whatever or because they just want to have a conversation. But sometimes they'll just walk by you and that's perfect with me. Sometimes they'll just say hi and that's it. You know how many people in Canada cannot just say hi and then walk by you? They all have to have this small talk here. It's just like, hi, with a hand. And that's it and keep going they kind of come off cold to people but that's my kind of hospitality i like that coldness you know just straight to the point either you got something to say or you don't if you don't got something to say keep it moving it's simple i don't know why people can't get that and it's like well that guy didn't say hi to me he he must be rude huh. what's his problem today it's like no we just ain't got nothing to talk about besides how was your day yesterday or what's new like what do you mean what's new what are you talking about what are we what are we talking about what's new for? I haven't seen you in two years. You want to ask what's new now? Jeez, you could have messaged me if you wanted to know what's new. Yeah, so the small talk, it's like, it's not in your face kindness, like the fake kindness. Like everybody has to have like this fake kindness in Canada. It's, and another thing, it's like, I don't miss the people in Canada. They have to be so hard. They have to be so hard. Like, what's that guy looking at? You know, it's, ah oh, man, it's annoying. Like when you're at a bar, and the guy's like, what's that guy looking at? Is he, does he want a problem? Like, there's none of that. Like, I've seen a few Canadians and Americans think the same thing here. Well, what, what's he looking at? Is he, is he being racist? Does he hate me? Like, no. He's just looking, bro. You're allowed to people watch, you know? You're in a public space. Relax. Tone down your toughness, bro. But there are some things that I miss. I miss, like, the convenience of things. Uh, how big the cities are. How much easier it is to do paperwork and get things done like you can look on Facebook in Canada get an electrician or a TV repair guy or a computer repair guy and not have to drive an hour or wait five days or who knows when it'll be done if it ever gets done like I got had this guy come pick my TV up because my the circuit board broke the power adapter he picked my TV up took three weeks just to come back and say oh it doesn't work I can't fix it so you owe me 30 bucks for delivery. It's like, why would you pick it up? Why wouldn't you look at the model number and ask me the model number and be like, what's the model number? I'll look it up, see if we have the part. If not, I can't fix it. But instead you pick it up, pretend to look at it, and then not fix it. Another one was with my, I had a scooter, and they said, because it was Japanese, they don't want to fix it because it's Japanese and the parts are hard. And so I brought it to like 12 different mechanics just for all of them to say, no, they're not fixing it. In Canada, no matter what brand it is, you can get the motorcycle fixed. You can get every part repaired. Even with the smart car. I had the smart car. And I'm like, can you put a new engine in it because the engine was bad? They're like, no, we can't. Well, we, we refuse. Like, you refuse to do a job and make money? I don't get it. And you know what that all comes from? Not enough people to work. So they got so much work that they'll just give you an astronomical price. Just if you say yes, they make an astronomical amount of money. If you say no, they move on to the next easy job. So they prefer to pick, pick and choose their jobs. They pick the easy job. So if you have a kind of a difficult job, they just refuse it. And that's just the way it is. You know, I kind of miss that where you can just get a guy to come over and weld a piece of post on your railing for 20 bucks. A guy that has no teeth, you know, with the, with the tan, the black the black skin, like the black skin from the roofing. You know those roofer guys that are probably all messed up a little bit? Yeah, those guys, they'll, they'll come and do any kind of side job for you in Canada. Here are you, 20 bucks? They ain't moving for 20 bucks, half these guys, I swear. But I gotta admit, I do have a good guy named Philip, and he kills it, he comes and does all our electricity. Like if we want a new outlet, a light put up, or whatever, a sink, sink cut out and a sink hooked up. He'll do all the plumbing and he'll do it for pretty cheap 20 to 40 bucks is like the most we ever paid so that's pretty good like but to find one of those guys whew, 
whew, impossible, especially for like big jobs like cars, concrete, or <laughs> you want to build something, good luck. You got to do it yourself. You got to go on the YouTube, watch a tutorial, and build it your damn self or learn how to fix a car. That's just the way it is, old traditional school. You know, you don't have time to hire somebody. Nobody wants to freaking work. <laughs> but yeah, those kind of things. I guess I kind of miss that where you, if I wanted my car fixed, I can just get it done. If I want an oil change, it takes 20 minutes. You just bring it to Canadian Tire, boom, they do your oil. You go have a hot dog outside at the vendor, and then you come back and you pay for your oil change. Here, it's kind of not like that, but look at this guy. He loves it here. Right, Enzo? <laughs> yeah. You love it? <laughs> now, it probably sounds like I'm moaning and groaning, but realistically, there's not much that I regret. And after five years, I can only tell you it's been easier and easier. Even without planning to move here, I mean, planning would have made everything easier, but life here is getting easier and easier and easier. And the language barrier is getting easier and easier and easier. So, I really have no regrets and life here as an expat has been great. I got to travel Europe. You get to get flights in Europe for like 18 bucks sometimes. 18 bucks you can go to Italy. You know, if I want to go this weekend, I can go to Italy for 18 bucks. What? Sorry, Enzo got me all, all dirty. He's getting mud all over me. But uh, yeah, 18 bucks. You can't even get a go bus to Toronto for 18 bucks. Never mind to a different country. So like, it's amazing like travel here is another huge thing like we get to go anywhere we want by plane for cheap especially in the summertime you can catch flights for super cheap in the winter from slits a little bit hard but you can just go to zagreb and get cheap flights there like i can go to istanbul for what i think i've seen a plane ticket for 60 euros and i can fly over to romania for what 25 so you know it's not so bad that kind of stuff is good here man and just like the safety everything's good here man so life is an expat after five years the first three years if you're a normal person you might be lonely especially if you don't know the language and you live on an island it's a little bit lonely especially in the winter but i'm not normal i love the silence and that's when i realized all my old friends were really not even my friends they barely check up on me they like i try to talk to them nothing so it's like I don't have any friends and I'm happy with that and that's great so it gave me a real chance to open my eyes of what life is life is family and being here as an expat made me realize that and I got out of all that doing things for your friends doing things with your friend lifestyle it's honestly amazing here I would never change it and look at this look at this guy you know <laughs> Even though he's getting me muddy, look at this. What's he doing? <laughs> but yeah, it's great.